Hi, everyone. Okay. Have you ever been to the doctor's office and seen kids borrow their parents' phones so engrossed in the games? Well, that was me when I was eight. I would borrow my parents' phones, their Blackberries, and I would play the game Brick Breaker nonstop. And when the iPad came out, Cut the Rope became my new obsession. So I don't know if it was just me, but I'm pretty sure I was the best at those games. But it was only when I was 10 when my math teacher told me to look into coding when I realized that through code, I had the power to make these games myself. And that just blew my mind. Since then, um, for three years, I have learned HTML, CSS, some JavaScript, Django, and Python. And I currently also want to look into data science and artificial intelligence. So throughout these years, um, people have asked me, what is coding? For me, coding is fun and creative. Over a year ago, when The Force Awakens first came out, I was such a big fan that I joined a costume competition. And not only did I make a costume out of fabric, colored pens, and glue, but what really sealed the deal and made me win was the app that I made. And in the app, when you press the buttons, it would make R2-D2 sounds. I found out that through coding, not only can you make games and costumes, but it can also help you win prizes. Since then, I have noticed coding in other everyday things. For example, CCTVs to make people feel safe. Radios through frequency hopping that can not only help you listen to your favorite music, but can also contact farmers if there's a typhoon that's coming. Refrigerators that keep your food fresh and also medicines fresh for sick patients. And I could go on and on. Computers, cell phones, Google search engine, and even YouTube. All of these things were made from lines of code and sometimes through electrical engineering and wires. This is what keeps me going every day with coding. Whenever I get a problem, I just tell myself that one day I will be able to make a discovery that will impact the world. But you see, I had a problem with solving problems. Whenever I would code, I would sometimes get a bug, which is a mistake in your code that prevents it from working. This was really frustrating because I spent hours on it and it wouldn't work. But I kept my cool and I searched it up. And what I found was this. And this really confused me because at the time I didn't even know what half of those words meant. So it made my problem even larger. So I tried and told my parents about coding and I asked them if they knew the solutions, but they didn't. In my world, at the time, when parents would think of coding, they would think the day of the week where you can't drive your car on EDSA. <laughs> so this was a big problem. And I tried searching for communities of girls like me who knew to code and wanted to learn to code but I couldn't find any here. Instead, I found statistics. In 1987, 30% of computer graduates were, were women, but today it's gone down to 22%, and the numbers aren't going anywhere. And this was really frustrating, because I thought coding was pretty cool. So raise your hand if you're a girl. Okay. Now keep your hand up if you want to be cool. I would keep my hand up. Keep it up. OK. <laughs> you can put them down now. Doesn't this look cool? This was a dress made in the Met Gala event last year, which was tech themed. And the dress actually has LED lights that change color 
whenever a tweet is made. This dress was actually made by IBM and some designers who really have a sense of style. When I first saw this, I was looking at Met Gala dresses with my friend in school, and um, I thought, huh, that's pretty cool. And it was only weeks later when I met a girl named Deshaun at a Google event, and she told me that she made her wedding dress out of LED lights too. And I thought that with her help, I could finally make a dress like this. That night, she gave me Gemma pieces, which are Arduinos, that make LED lights turn on. All I needed to do was to code them, and I would be able to have a dress like that. But it wasn't that simple. <laughs> when I would code the LED lights, I had another bug. I tried searching things, and it didn't really work. So I contacted my friend, Belli. She is a UP professor for computer engineering, and I'm so thankful for her help because we were able to make it work. So now it works, and I'm planning on putting it on dresses soon. I realized that um, these LED lights could also be used for other things other than dresses, for when you're walking home in the dark, or, if you're, or for construction workers who work in dark mines. But to get there, it took four women, not just myself. This is just one reason why a community is key rather than just self-learning by yourself. So back to when I was searching for community for girls, I found statistics, but I also found a club. But this club was only based in the U.S., and it, and it was for women who were a lot older than I was at the time. So I had a problem. I couldn't find a group that I was looking for here in the Philippines. But, as my mom says, when you can't find a solution, make one. And I did. I made and founded Girls Will Code. Girls Will Code is a, a company founded by myself that aims to teach girls to code, for starting from when they're even five years old. My first plan of action was to start a club here in the Philippines. I put together some pieces of a curriculum. I got teachers and made um, the club interesting for girls. And so when I decided to launch it actually here in the school, I was so sure that there were going to be waves of people coming to join this group. Because if it was in my situation, I would have totally joined. <laughs> and guess how many people joined? One. <laughs> Only one person joined. And I could have given up then, but I decided to keep going. I tried the school across the street, and I did the same thing. But this time, I improved the curriculum, and I made sure it was even more interesting. And guess how many people joined now? Zero. <laughs> Zero people joined. This was really discouraging for me because I thought it would be such a big hit. But I kept going, and this time I showed the code to each class of students so it was more specific towards them. And this time, 15 people joined. And this may not seem like a lot, but to me, it was a milestone. I could have stopped two years ago, but I didn't. And now I have 15 people joining and a lot of people sending me emails who want to join too. This is just one example. Here's another one. Girls Will Code's mission is for that girls all over the Philippines are given the opportunity to code. And so I wanted to teach code to students, specifically girls, in public schools as well. But that was a problem, because when I had the chance to teach girls to code in public schools, I found out that not all schools have computers. And even if the public school did, they were usually out of date. And 
they never had any Wi-Fi. That day, I learned how important the internet was, and I also learned that I needed to find a solution. But I thought that it was impossible because how could you learn to code without computers? But nothing is impossible if you Google enough times. And eventually, I was able to find a simple activity to teach girls to code without Wi-Fi and without computers. This is me teaching them. And the solution that I found was an offline coding activity where you make necklaces where the beads represent zeros and ones in binary, and you were able to make a necklace that represented the initial of your first name. This was another milestone for me because I found a way to teach girls to code without some basic necessities. And yeah, so that was a really important milestone that I found, and I'm hoping that soon we'll be able to give this opportunity to all public schools. So where is Girls Will Code now? Companies have reached out to us and they're providing teachers and also offline coding kits. School, for schools, we are planning to start after school activities and hand out curriculums for them to use to teach their own students. Parents are themselves trying to figure out what coding is and kids What's most important is that they are trying to learn to code, they want to join Girls Will Code activities, and they want to become an ambassador for Girls Will Code. Now, there's a really important person I want to thank. This is Susan Kane. She doesn't know who I am, but I'm a really big fan. And I just want to mention her here because uh, she actually gave a TED Talk herself. And when I watched it, it was really inspiring. If you haven't seen it, it's about the power of introverts and how, despite being so quiet, their minds have the power to become leaders. I have both of her books, and since then, I wanted to do two things. One is to make an impact on the world using my introvert power, and two, is to give a TED or a TEDx talk. And thanks to you guys, I think I have accomplished some of those things. Now, remember when I listed all of these things where that coding had to do in your everyday lives? Well, I chose these things for a reason. Each of these have been made or contributed by women. Marie Van Britten Brown and her husband made CCTVs. Heidi Lamar was not only a Hollywood actress, but also a pioneer in wireless telecommunications, which at the time helped combat the Nazis. Florence Parpart made the first modern day refrigerator. Grace Murray Hopper contributed to computer languages and is a big part of computer languages that people use today. Marissa Mayer, she was, one of she was Google's first female engineer, Google employee number 20, and was a big part of the contribution to the Google search engine. Susan Wojcicki is also a big part of Google. She created Google AdWords and is currently the CEO of YouTube. And she is a mother of five children. Lastly, Ada Lovelace, who contributed to all of these things. In, back in the 1840s, she actually created the first specific computer algorithm. And she predicted that computers today would help with graphic design, music, and scientific discoveries, which they all do. All of these women made history, and girls will make the future. Thank you.